Richard, an announcement today from Barclays that they have bought ING's ING Direct UK business. Um, this is a retail deposit taking um, institution. I guess the big question for shareholders is, is this just a bolt on that you'd expect from a new CEO to lap up? Or is this the beginning of a big shift for Barclays Bank away from the bad old days of Bob Diamond towards the fluffy new horizon of friendly retail banking? Well, I'm sure as Barclays Investment Bankers turned on their screens this morning and heard about this deal, they must have fretted a little bit that maybe Anthony Jenkins' maiden deal, another bolt-on deal, I agree, in retail is uh, perhaps a, a, a sign of the direction of travel. Because he did come from the retail side. He's very much a retail man. And in fact, this deal was heralded by ING in August when it said it was going to sell ING in the UK, ING Direct UK and ING Direct Canada did Canada, sold it to Scotiabank, now it's done this to Barclays, and Anthony Jenkins was head of retail when this all began. So if you like it, it's got very little to do with Bob Diamond, the outgone or the previous CEO. However, um, there is a bit of a model here. Barclays has been bolting on stuff in its UK retail business. It, to me, it's a surprisingly small contributor. Less than a fifth of pre-tax profit comes from UK retail and business banking. So it, it's bought uh, Standard Life's non-core online bank and savings business. It bought Egg, that old wonderful uh, online bank that was passed from pillar to post. And it also bought MBNA's um, business credit card business. So th there's evidence that it's trying to bulk up a little bit. And of course, it's coming from behind in mortgages. Although it bought Woolwich years ago, it never really made a big and run. And should investors be worried that the bank is moving inexorably towards retail? I mean, it's a lower returning business, right? At the moment, it's returning slightly more than its investment bank, but normally you'd expect a higher return out of the old Barclays yep. capital. So for investors, this is a worry, I think, that if it is a sign that it is heading down that route, I want to see a more balanced universal bank, and that's what Barclays is good at. That's what it spent a small fortune building up. It would be foolish to waste that and clip its wings back to, say, an RBS-style um, non-flying bird investment bank. And what does the deal mean from a capital perspective? From a capital perspective, it's neutral for Barclays, which is good because it needs capital. Um, it probably needs about five billion in round numbers just to get it safely above the Basel III 10 percent number that Britain is going to be holding its banks to. Um, in, in other ways, it's good for ING too because it releases capital and it too is under pressure to raise capital. So it's a win-win in that sense. But I think ROE, accretive, uh, let's see. Okay, well, it's a very interesting deal. Let's see if it's part of uh, many retail deals to come for the new CEO. Thank you very much, Richard.